Praise the Lord, Facebook family and friends. Again, this is Pastor James E. Bannister coming to you live again with another Demonology teaching series. This time I entitled it Demonology 102 rather than 101. 101, as we know, is mostly designated as an introductory of anything. If you study Mechanics 101 or Computer 101, Demonology 101, I'm not finished with that level yet, but I decided to step it up a little more with Demonology 102, the intermediate level, and it is entitled The Groupings of Demons. Demons work in groups. No demon likes to work alone. I've never ever heard a demon working alone. You know, evil love company, like misery love company. Uh, the mafia doesn't work alone. There's not a one-man mafia. There's not a one-man gang uh, member. They all work in groups. Satan loves to work in groups. As we notice, when God cast Satan out of heaven, he wasn't cast out alone. He persuaded others to be on his side and to go against God. So he has helpers, he has cronies, he has people, uh, to beings rather, to work with him. They are demons. They are under his assignment, under his control. They fear him. They call him master. Because the Bible said, to whom you yield yourself service to obey, that's who you're going to serve. So the demons yield it to Satan. And they deserted God. So they got a new master, which is Satan. And when Satan assigned them to do, they are going to do. They are highly devoted to Satan, their master. Uh, I remember some time casting a demon out. And the demon is very stubborn and won't obey and come out immediately. And I said, okay, now I'm going to burn you like Bishop taught us. Release the anointing. And he says, you're burning me. You're burning me. The anointing, the Holy Spirit in you is high. He's burning me. He's burning me. I said, well, the Holy Spirit is burning you like that. And you're screaming like that. Why don't you just come on out? He said, I don't want to come out. I don't care how much you. I'm being burned by the presence of the Holy Spirit. I don't want to come out. I said, why not? He said, my master is going to get me. So they refer to Satan as their master. And indeed, he is their master. Okay? How does Satan became their master? Uh, Satan didn't create them. God did. But when they rebelled against God in heaven, Michael the archangel cast them out, stripped them from their heavenly garments, or their heavenly robes. They became disembodied spirits. And they've been down here ever since working with a new master, which is Satan. To whom you yield yourself to. Okay, so that's who you enslave yourself to. So now they're no longer uh, see, seeing God as their master, but truly Satan is their master. Okay, so I'm going to be teaching the groupings of demons. All right, this subject is very important. Why would one want to learn about the groupings of demons? Why? Well, if you're casting out demons, and somebody has lust, fornication, adultery, lust of their eyes, okay, and all these other sexual sins, and you just cast out one demon and leave the rest of the pack in there, or their cronies or friends in there, and the person continues to be tempted sexually in another way, they may be able to still work and open the door for even more demons to come inside the person. So you didn't really help deliver the person fully you just got that one demon out you just got lust out or maybe you got the fornication out they may have came to you and say pastor i need deliverance i have a fornication spirit i have a problem fornicating you say okay that's the spirit of fornication we're going to cast him out well what about the other helpers that are in that groupings of demons what about lust you know and all the other spirits sexual spirits that come along with fornication so this is why it is very important to understand that in demonology deliverance, there is a thing called the groupings of demons. I remember I was casting a demon out of the lady, spirit of fear, and, I, and the demon was talkative. Sometimes demons are silent, they just obey and come out. The talkative ones are the ones I love to deal with the most. And I asked the demon, 
Who else is working with you in that body? Who are your friends? He didn't want to tell me, but I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you. Who, who are you working with? And, of course, we have authority over them. And we make them rat, rat everything out. Tell. Like if the police apprehend a suspect or a criminal and say, who, who, who is your suppliers? What's your source? Who else is working with you, you know, in this gang? And he's starting ratting out all the gang members. So this is how we do demons. When we have the authority of Jesus Christ over these demons, we, they are subject, so we uh, interrogate them or we pressure them. This is warfare. This is spiritual war. It's like the United States government might apprehend a war criminal, you know, and make him tell uh, the deep, dark secrets of his country and the strategy of their military uh, strategies or whatnot, okay, or their secret plans to overthrow America or whatever. So we interrogate demons or we pressure demons and we cause demons to... Uh, tell and that's how we gain a lot of knowledge in demonology and deliverance. So I asked the demon who are you work with? He said anxiety Anxiety and he started naming other spirits because he's not working in that body alone for instance when you encounter the spirit of suicide He need other demons to allow him to come to open the door for him to come in the person now the last demon that is going to take that person out is suicide. But how suicide came in the first place? The person went through a depression, a sad uh, trauma, a, a, traumatic acid, uh, a traumatic accident or traumatic event, a situation happened in their life, okay, in their lives. And so then they uh, started going in a dark corner, in a dark room, and then depression spirit uh, overtake them. And then now this depression demon opens the door for pity, self-pity, see, uh, guilt, spirit of guilt is there. They may blame themselves what they're going through, okay, or they may falsely accuse themselves of what they're going through. They got false accusation spirit, okay, blame spirit, blame demon, and many other spirits will come in there, despondency, hopelessness, okay, uh, and so fear. And all these demons work together. It's a whole group. So what I'm going to do on this segment is teach the groupings of demons so that when you get in demonology deliverance ministry, God will be able to use you to totally set that person free from all those demons that are packed or clan together. So sometimes we call them colonies of demons or groupings of demons. So what we want you to learn that when you're working with someone, you don't want to give them partial deliverance. You want God to utilize you to totally set them free and full deliver. Sometimes we don't even have to ask the demons how many other demons are in there. Holy Spirit is in charge. We're subject to Him. We're led by Him. And Holy Spirit will give you a word of knowledge of what spirit is in there. Let me give you an example of a word of knowledge. I remember one time I was on the phone with a sister who had left the Bible Church of Christ uh, ministry, and she was very, uh, very despondent. She, she was very uh, sad and upset about things. And so she was talking to me on the phone, and I just allowed her to verbalize her frustration. And for about three hours, she asked me a question. She said, out of all my sisters, I've been raped. She said, I have over five sisters. None of them had ever been raped in their life, in their lives. And, I, and she said, well, how come it happened to me? What happened? And, uh, and I said, what happened? She said, I've been, a man uh, broke, I mean, came through my window in Brooklyn, New York, where I was living. Okay. Of course, the fire escape window wasn't locked in the summertime. And he came through the window and raped me. She said, I've been raped so many times. And I would talk to my sisters about it, ask them, had they ever been raped? They said, no, not once in their life. Not once in their lives. So, she said, but why is this demons, I mean, these people keep raping me? And right then and there, the Holy Spirit gave me a word of wisdom. And immediately, without even thinking about the question that she was asking me, the Holy Spirit in me spoke and said, because there is a spirit called invitation to rape she said what 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 is that and the holy spirit had me to break it down to her there are all kinds of demons 
Satan has all kinds. Some you even think is a name of a demon or an action of a demon. Because their real names are not being used by them, the ones that God gave them in heaven. Because they're no longer in that kingdom of heaven with God. So they're in Satan's kingdom now. So Satan named them according to the actions that he assigned them to do. Like lying demon, he lied. Stealing demon, he steals. Okay, lust demon, lust. Right? Witchcraft demon, he's, he specializes in witchcraft. Every demon is a specialist. So, invitation to rape. I explained to her, if you were in a room with a group of men, you know, isolated from everyone else, and the demons know this, the demons in those men, which are called rape spirits, because they, they have demons of rape in them, that's who caused the person to rape you, the demon, motivate the person to rape you, put it in their mind and the heart to do it, and they act upon the motivation of the devil. See, this is how he gets people to murder. The, the demon doesn't pull the trigger. You do that. The demon doesn't take the knife and stab the person. You do that. But they use your physical body. They inspire, they motivate your mind to do their bidding, to do their evil. See, but you can resist the devil. But many people don't. Or don't know how to resist the devil. You have the power to resist him. So now, invitation to rape. Is a demon that's inside of her. Now the demon, when I said, because you have a demon of invitation of rape in you, the demon spoke out of her and said, how do you know I was in this girl? I hid from such and such exorcist. I heard, I hid from such and such deliverance minister. They didn't find me in here. That man, they always call Jesus that man, that man had you to call this girl and for me to be manifested. And... Because you don't call this girl. This is the first time you ever called this girl. And that man had you to call her to, man to make me manifest. And the demon went on ranting and complaining. And then I told the demon, I will cast you out. But she has to go to work in the morning. It was like almost 3 a.m. in the morning. We've been on the phone almost three hours. But in the end of that conversation, the Lord made that demon manifest. And the demon was complaining that... Uh, acting surprised that I knew it was there, but the demon also know who revealed to me that it was there. I'm not psychic. Of course the Holy Spirit revealed to me, Jesus Christ revealed to me, that the demon name is invitation to rape. And the demon manifest and began to speak. See? So then the demon said that I was correct. Uh, that whenever she's alone or something, they are the one who instigate the rape, motivate the rape. So I said, if you were in the room with five men, four men, it doesn't matter what number of men, and they have the spirit of rape in them, the demon in you would invite the demon in them. In the unknown world, in the spirit, there's a lot going on in the dark world, in the spiritual world, the unseen world that we are not familiar with. Even in the book of Kings, when Elijah told the Lord to open the eyes of his servant that he may see, and Elijah told him, they, I think it was Elisha, they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And when his, God opened the eyes of the servant, now he's seen spiritually. When he looked, he saw chariots of, of fires of angels, see? So God, there's, there's a lot going on in the spirit world that the natural world is, is not a part of or not aware of, okay? So God revealed to me in the spiritual world that this girl... By his Holy Spirit had invitation to rape demon in her that invited the demon in the man that has the spirit of rape in him come and rape her. See, Satan's kingdom is not divided. Jesus said it. And if his kingdom become divided, how can Satan cast out Satan? So they, the demons work in unity. And, and as Bishop Brian said, Satan's kingdom is so well organized. They're not like us, the body of Christ. We bicker, fight, disagree, and all that with one another as pastors, preachers, teachers. One got a doctrine over here. One got a theology belief over here. Another got a theological belief over there. They're not, his kingdom not like that. They all are in agreement to do one thing, evil, against God's creation, against God Almighty. They accuse us to God and accuse God, accuse us before God. And then they'll put the accusation on God. Oh, this was why God let this happen to me. Why God is doing this to me. It's not God doing it, it's the devil. See, but most people blame things that the devil do on God. That's why a young my brother's 
ex-girlfriend told me years ago, I don't want Jesus Christ. I don't want to serve him. I hate God. I said, what did God do to you? She said, he killed my son. I said, how did your son die? She said, in a car accident. I said, was God driving the car? See, they find out that the reason why her son got killed, the father was driving drunk with his son in the car, and he had a terrible accident. So how are we blaming what the devil do, did and what we did on God? But that's what the devil does. He's a false accuser. He's accuser of the brethren. So back to the spirit of invitation to rape. I never knew. I know the rape spirit exists. But I never knew there was a demon called invitation to rape. See God had revealed to me many other demons. That I have not read in demonology books. When, when the Lord take you to that level. Now you are more advancing in demonology. You're, you're not learning rope learning. You're not learning something that previous exorcists have learned. But now you're gaining your own experience in demonology. And who's my teacher? The Holy Spirit. See, he's teaching me. He's training me. And when I'm dealing with the demons, this is a, this is a sample of something he revealed to me. So the young lady had invitation to rape demons. Okay? So demons work together. He's working with a demon called rape. He inviting the demon in someone else to come and rape you. Do you understand? Satan kingdom is working in unison in evil. Now, here I have, and I'm going to try to make this video very short. Here I have a book, Pigs in the Parlor, by Frank Hammond and Ida Mae Hammond. They were Baptist ministers. The Practical Guide to Deliverance, uh, page 125, chapter 20 entitled Demons Groupings and I'm going to be reading and commenting on the groupings of demons in this segment of the tape. Demons are identified according to their nature. What we mean by that, I already said it, a rape demon, he wants to rape, he's not going to steal, he's not going to lie. A lying demon is not going to steal. A cancer demon is not going to steal, he's going to give you cancer. So according to their nature, we mean by their character, their action, that's how we call them out. We don't call them out by their heavenly names. Okay, we don't even know their heavenly name unless they reveal it to me. Of course, a demon did told me years ago his heavenly name uh, was Cesarius. But they lost their names because in the kingdom they are in now, the name is useless. So anyway, back to the groupings of demons. It's very important to learn this because when you start casting out demons or someone starts casting demons out of you, you may want to ask them, did you get the groupings? Did you get all the demons out of re the related spirits? Did you cast them all out of me? Because I don't want a demon left inside of me that's going to invite more other demons or the same demons to come back in. Or the or demons related will be able to tempt you to sin so they can open the door for seven more demons to come back in. As Jesus said in Matthew the 12th chapter verse 43. When an unclean spirit go out of a person, they go through dry places seeking rest. When they found, uh, they say, I will return to my house. They call your body their home, okay? And no one wants to be evicted from their home, okay? They indwell your body and they call your body or our bodies their home because that's where they live. That's where they dwell. And they don't want to come out. And a lot of times they'll say, I'm not coming out of here because I've been in here so long. Where else am I going to go? I enjoy it in here. In other words, when they enjoy being in a person, they're having fun doing evil. They, they stay in that body so long and having such a great time using that person and destroying that person. They're doing the assignment that Satan gave them. Why would they want to give up their home? Somebody come to you right now and tell you to get out your house. You don't want to get out your house. You say, you're crazy. This is where I live. So the demons, they're the same. So they call our body the home. And Jesus said in that verse, read it in Matthew 12, 43. He said, I, he said, I return to my house, see, which is that person's body. All right. So we want all the groupings of demons to be cast out. And there are many groupings of demons. So here, demons are identified according to their nature. A demon of hate is called hate. Each demon is a specialist. A hate demon does not foster lust. He only promotes hatred. When demons are commanded to name themselves, they will usually name themselves in identity with their nature. Rebellion spirit, he calls rebellion. 
cursing demon. He's in the voice box, the tongue. He curses. Indifferent spirit, etc. Occasionally, a demon will give a personal name such as Jim or Shirley. At times, they will give foreign names. This is a deceptive measure, measure to keep the deliverance minister from knowing their true nature. The minister should command the demons to reveal their nature, saying, what is your na nature, demon? Sometimes when you ask them, what's your name? Who are you? They say, I'm not telling you. I don't have to tell you. None of your business. <laughs> they talk just like humans. None of your business. You being nosy. And whatever evil they may or feel like saying to you. Okay? So then when you ask them their name, they don't want to give you their name. And they know once they give you their name, they are submitting to your authority. So to rebel against your authority or resist or not acknowledge your authority, they play like they don't have to obey you or listen to you by uh, rejecting your request. You understand? Or ignoring your request. So this is why when you ask them their name, they uh, stall, they use stall tactics, or they want to play games. Okay? But when they recognize that authority that you have, but they're trying to pretend that they don't recognize the authority that you have, and they want to play games. It's just like if a cop catch somebody on the street corner here in New York and ask them, uh, you know, what you doing over here in this neighborhood? Why are you sitting on these stoops over here? Do you live here? And he'll go, oh, I don't have to tell you where I live here. Not, you know, or he start being rebellious or resisting the authority of the police officer. Or he might say, put your hand in the air, get against the wall. And he may try, that person may try to resist the authority of the police officer. And then now the police officer is going to become very more aggressive trying to get this person to be subject to their uh, governmental authority in that they are in uniform in the presence of the government so they feel they have this authority you got to obey them and a lot of times people don't always obey the police but then we know the police use other measures to enforce uh, their authority and that's what we do in exorcism we will force our authority even more over the demon by saying okay I'm gonna burn you I'm gonna or I'm gonna pray and ask the Lord to burn you and I have done that and then I lo and behold the Holy Spirit falls and the demons jumping and jerking and said okay okay he's burning me mean Jesus is burning me I'll tell you I'll tell you I'll tell you that man is burning me so it's so much experience I've learned and gained and demonology in dealing with the demons see who do you want a doctor who just came out of med school never prescribe medication never have any patients a doctor who, who never did surgery in real life, only in the lab, in, in, in medical school, or who you want, a preacher, an exorcist, who has lots of experience in dealing with demons and been used by God on many occasions. See, that's why the Bible says, speak that which you do know and testify that which you have seen. Uh, they're making so much noise outside here in my neighborhood. I hope you all can't hear that background noise. It's not uh, drowning me out, praise God. But anyway, uh, that's why I like to stay up late at night and make these videos. I'm going to bed 4 a.m. in the morning, 5 a.m. in the morning. It's more peaceful and it's more quiet where I live. Okay, so occasionally a demon will give a personal name such as Jim or Shirley. At times they will give foreign names. This is a deceptive measure to keep the deliverance minister from knowing their true nature. The minister should command the demon to reveal their nature, saying, What is your nature, demon? Indwelling demons are seldom found singly. They are together in groups. Such groupings may be referred to as colonies, clans or families. When one demon is detected or discerned, one should immediately be alert to look for its companions. See? A group of demons is banded together for the purpose of controlling a particular area of a person's life. Therefore, there is a very logical pattern of spirits to be found in any particular group. Certain types of spirits are found over and over in the same combination. It's so true. Uh, however, one must not assume that the combination will always be the same. That's true. The possibilities for groupings are unlimited. Yeah, because sometimes a demon can be in one group, but there's an overlapping of that demon spirit into another group. For instance, I may uh, call out demons of disease. I have a tape called Disease Demons. 
where I'm talking to all the demons of disease, nature, like uh, Alzheimer's, aneurysm on the brain, uh, cancer, HIV, uh, tuberculosis, leprosy, and you name it, they all. Even I had a dictionary and the demons told me I was wise because I told them I was going to get a medical dictionary and call them all out. And they said, no, don't do that. Don't do that. You're going to destroy our kingdom. So uh, God led me to the dictionary and I was just calling out big words. You know, every for every high sounding word, there's a small word. Like like for the words, for instance, the word kiss, osculate. It's kiss, see? Osculate. Penniless, impecunious, like that. So I'm using a dictionary, but yet when I asked, I read the word encephalitis, the demon responded, and I said, what is your purpose in the human body? He said, to cause high fever. He said, your fever, uh, he said, I make your fever go so high till you die. Now, they're about death, murder, destroying, come to kill, destroy, as Jesus said. So he bragged and boasts how he said it. He said it boldly, proudly. So they're very wicked demons. So anyway, groupings of demons, very important to know that they work in groups so that you can get out the whole nest, we call them, or the whole groupings. All right? A group of demons is banded together for the purpose of controlling a particular area of a person's life. Therefore, there is a very logical pattern of spirits to be found in any particular group. Certain types of spirit are found over and over in the same combination. So true. However, one must not assume that the combination will always be the same. The possibilities are unlimited. All right. Within each group, there will be a strong man. And I want to teach something that I've learned from dealing with demons when it comes to ranks of demons. Uh, how I learned the rank of demons, most people know about the strong man because Jesus talked about first buying the strong man, then you should spoil his goods. Uh, and he spoke that when he was accusing him of being Bezebel, the prince of the demons, and that he casts out demons by the prince of the demons, which they were blaspheming Christ. Because anytime you attributed the work of the Holy Spirit to the work of Satan, that is a form of blasphemy. Okay? So now, Jesus was casting out the demons by the power of God. But they attribute it to the power of Satan. So now, the strong man or ruling spirits. I've learned from Win Wally that, of course, Win Wally is an ex was an exorcist, and he said uh, a demon told him that he had a rank. And when Wally asked the demon, "What is your rank?" he said, "Chief." I didn't learn anything else about the rank of demons until I was dealing with the demon inside of a young lady, and I said, "Y'all have ranks, do y'all? Don't y'all?" And Dean said, yeah, we have ranks. We set up like a military government. We set up like a kingdom. So we have hierarchy. So I said, what ranks do you have? I said, okay, I know strong man. And when Wally said, one told him he was a chief. And this is how the Lord took me from that level to another level in demonology. See, not only you learn from those before you, you stand on their shoulders. So if you stand on their shoulders, you should go higher then, then them. You should, you should supersede them and advance more as you are evolving more and more. So the Lord had me to supersede what others before me said in their demonology books. So the demons started naming Archman, Chief, Captain, Strongman. See? And I said Archman, and he said President. And I said, who's behind, who's underneath, what rank is underneath Satan? He said President. And then he went on down the line. Chief, captain, archman, strongman. See? So I'm learning all these ranks. And they told me Satan gives them ranks. Okay? Because God has rank. You heard of Mark, Michael the archangel. The archangel. That means he's the chief angel. So there's a chief angel. There's someone underneath him. Underneath the chief. So then he told me Satan will dispatch. Or designate rather. A certain amount of power to each demon and he just uh, spreads that power out among underling demons so you got Archman Archman may have 3,000 power or strength of power second rank and I'll, I'll get into the more details of ranks later because I'm really want to talk about the groupings of demons but yeah they come in ranks okay and that's another tape I'll make the ranks of demon I'll break down to you how they work 
in their kingdom in, in terms of ranks. Okay? I have cast out the president, the chief, the captain. I have a tape. My name, uh, the girl has a tape called Legions, or Casting Out Legion. And I said, uh, Chief, Chief. He said, What? I said, Captain. He said, What? Every one of them sounded different. I guess they sound different according to their level of strength. And I called President. He said, What? He was more louder because he was the more stronger monster in there. So there's so much to learn in demonology, but if you really want to learn this, you learn from those that have experience, okay? Those that were called by God, those who know what they're talking about. The Bible says, speak, speak that which you do know and testify that which you've seen. See, I know a lot about demonology, but see, I'm not into myself, and I'm not braggadocious about it, and I'm not seeking uh, attention or pride or anything, because this is something I didn't even want to get into in the first in the first business, if you listen to my previous tapes, I told how the Lord got me to do it. But anyway, since the Lord called me to do it, I just want to be obedient to Him. I'm not looking for the reputation or anything. I just want to enlighten God's people and teach them about demonology. So I entitled this session Demonology 102, Intermediate Level. Okay, so now, within each group, there would be a strong man or ruling spirit. Often during ministry, a ruling spirit will be specifically identified. It is not, of course I'm reading from Frank and Ottoman Hammond's book, always necessary that he be identified as a ruling spirit in order to effect the deliverance. Such identification will usually be given for one or two reasons. First, the Holy Spirit may be directed in order or procedure. The deliverance minister will want to be alert to whatever battle plan the Lord may give. So true. There are situations where the Lord will direct that the ruling spirit be dealt with first and his companions. I've heard Bishop Bryant said that. I've done that. Sometime, once we find out the, 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 rank, the highest ranked demon in there, we say we're going to leave him for last. But we want to get out all his underlings, all his cronies, all, all the little enslaved demons to him. So he'll be left in there all by himself, and he'll be more easier to cast out. Now, he's the strongest demon in there. Sometimes we would target the strongest demon, and when the little ones or the lesser ones see we cast him out, they become even more weak and fearful, because they say, well, if he got him out, I know he can get me out. You see, so if you're directed by the Holy Spirit, you will know which one to cast out first. Okay, and it's very important. How, what order you do that in. Okay, and this is what they're talking about. The deliverance minister will want to be alert to whatever battle plan the Lord may give. There are situations where the Lord will direct that the ruling spirit be dealt with first and then his companions. At other times, the leading of the Lord will be to drive out the lesser spirits first and then the ruling spirit last. There seems to be no real merit in questioning why the Lord leads one way and then another. A good soldier is trained to follow orders without questioning his commander. At times he may be given great latitude in choosing his own route of attack. Yes, that's true. And at other times his orders are quite specific. The same is true in the battle of spiritual warfare. A second reason why the ruling spirit may be identified is that it is for the benefit of the person receiving deliverance. It can be quite helpful to know which spirit to be on special guard against in the future. In other words, keeping the demons out. Some spirits are especially tied in with habit patterns that must be changed and areas of the common man that must be crucified. Subsequent to deliverance, the person will have to fight some battles on his own to, ma to maintain his deliverance. It is very helpful to know exactly what one is fighting and what is flesh and what is demon spirit you got you got battles going in you're fighting the flesh and you're fighting the demon we tell people uh a lot of pastors cheat, teach because they don't know about demonology deliverance that the, re the reason why you're struggling and committing fornication and all these things because you haven't crucified your flesh but what we teach is anything that you cannot control it's a sign, sure sign, that you got demonic present and you need a demon cast out. Now, once you cast that spirit out, now you can put that flesh on the subjection. Because you don't have the demon inside of you 
motivating you, okay, and controlling you to commit that sin. So now your battle is no longer within, your battle is without. See, so now you have to fight the enemy from without and then crucify the flesh within. But you trying to crucify the flesh and a demon at the same time, not going to work. You got to get one out. And that is, you can't get the flesh out, you got to get the demon out. Then put the flesh under subjection to the word of God. As Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9, 27, I put my body under subjection. That's by preaching to others, I'll be a castaway. So put the body under subjection. Uh, present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. Demon can't come back in. So that's how to keep your deliverance, by walking in holiness and obeying the word of God. See? That's why the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, 18, flee fornication. That's why I tease a lot of Christians, just not trying to mock them. But I say, y'all know no weapon formed against me shall prosper. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. But y'all don't know 1 Corinthians 6, 18, which is very important. Flee fornication. And I like the word flee, which diaco in the Greek means to pursue, uh, to pursue or not pursue earnestly. I mean flee, get away from quickly. Like Joseph did in the Bible when Potiphar's wife tried to seduce him. And that's how Joseph, of course, she falsely accused him of rape. And that's how he ended up in prison. But as he said in the end, uh, they meant it for evil, meaning his brethren, but God meant it for good. It was all in the plan of God to get Joseph where he wanted him to be. Now, demons, okay, work in groups. I'm trying to be repetitious. In case you're just tuning in and you haven't heard what I said earlier. This is about the groupings of demons and the reason why you want to know groupings and learn the groupings. So if you're taking someone through deliverance or you're receiving deliverance, you want to make sure all the spirits that are there as a clan in your body, no demon works alone, okay? He will work with friends. The mafia is not a one-man organization. The gangsters is not a one-man organization. And Satan Kingdom is not a one-man organization, okay? They do work in groups. Sometimes we cast them out. He said, oh, no, you cast out my friend. I said, y'all not friends, really, are y'all? They said, no, we work together. Wow. They partnership in evil. See? And demon told me he get lonely. I said, you get lonely? See, they have human emotions now. They have emotions like humans. Okay? Remember the Bible said God made us a little lower than the angels. How much lower? The Bible didn't say. It just said a little lower. See, to what extent or what degree, we don't know. So God made us a little lower than the angels, and they were angels, but they cannot amount to being or equated to be angels anymore. So the next thing lowest in the, in the, in the ladder is the step down is humans. So they want to be like us, they said, okay? They have emotions. Humans can think. Humans can, uh, I mean, demons can think. Demons can feel. Demons can speak, okay? Demons can plan. And yes, they operate, okay? And they're real, okay? It is the work of Jesus Christ. If you look at my other Demonology 101 tape, I said it's the ministry of Jesus Christ. I went from Bible verse to Bible verse to prove to you that this is the work that Jesus did. He trained his disciples to do it. There's occasion the disciples tried to cast out a demon, couldn't cast it out. So all this is in the Bible. Anyone that is against this is against the Word of God. I'm only teaching you that pertaining to the Word of God. The experience that I gained from dealing with the demon and what Jesus told us to do. He said in John 14 and 12, the works that I do shall you do also. He that believe on me, I believe on him. So that pertains to me. Someone said, oh, maybe he was talking to his 12 disciples when he quoted that scripture. Really? So then why Paul came along and cast demons out in Acts 16, 16. Paul wasn't present with the 12. Well, Paul was one born out of due time. Yeah, but he, didn't, he wasn't present when Jesus told his disciples, the works that I do, you shall do also. And look at Philip. He was a, a deacon first and then became the evangelist. He went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them and demons were coming out. So that's for all of us. The sensationist theory. Look up the sensationist theory. There are a lot of the crazy theological terms. Asinine, nonsensical theological terms. Yeah, lapsarianism and I don't want to name all the isms. Okay? But Cessationist theory believe that miracles and healings and the casting out of demons went away after the apostles in the first century, the, the early church, it's called. And it died out because now we have the canning of scripture. 
the canonicity of the scriptures. So they believe because now we have the 66 books of the Bible, God no longer has to use miracles and healings and signs and wonders to testify the, the truth of the gospel. Okay, that we just have the written word. It's not so. Not so at all. I've been healed by the Lord miraculously and seen many visions and many miraculous things by God. Okay, so don't tell me to believe or ask me to believe in sensationist theory. It is error. It is heresy and that's another spirit. So I'm going to try to conclude this very fast because many people have a short attention span. I remember Jesus talking in the Bible. He told the disciples, I have many things to say unto you, but you're not able to bear them right now. So we're not trying to teach everything in one sitting, okay? But enough little uh, nuggets of, of knowledge here and there, okay? So that you can learn their groupings of demons. All right, where are we? Uh, a second reason why the ruling spirit may be identified is that it is for the benefit of the person receiving deliverance. It can be quite helpful to know which spirit to be on special guard against in the future. That's why we tell we, we take the deliverance session people can go back and hear it or know what they were delivered from sometime before we take a person through deliverance we have them to write down a list of things they're struggling with or what they potentially may think uh, may be inside of them or they may have to have be have deliverance from okay or things they were involved in this uh, book I have by Doris Wagner has a questionnaire have you ever been to a seance have you uh, ever had your palm read have you ever made a, a pact with the devil? Uh, did you have you ever gone to a witch doctor or a witch? And all those type of things. Have you ever played with the Ouija board, Dr Dungeons and Dragons, and, and all these other things? Have you ever worn a amulet or a piece of jewelry given by the witch doctor or the witch? Uh, have have they given you any magic potions or lotions to bathe in or clothing? Had, did you have to give them some hair or, or an object or a piece of your clothing and they did something to it and they tell you now wear this on special occasions to ward off spirit in which you are being demonized because listen, the only power that can set us free is the power of God Almighty, not the power of the devil. Stop going to the devil to try to get help when your help comes from up above. David said, I will look unto the hill from which come my help. My help comes from the Lord. A lot of Christians run into the witch doctor, believing in witchcraft, and working in the power of the devil rather than believing God by faith to deliver them and set them free. So now, some spirits are especially tied in with habits and patterns that must be changed in areas of the carnal man that must be crucified. True. From experience, I'm sorry, subsequent to deliverance, the person will have to fight some battles on his own to maintain his deliverance. It is very helpful to know exactly what one we, is, we are fighting, what is the flesh, and what is the demon spirit. From experience gained through hundreds of deliverance sessions, and in dealing with demon groupings, I am persuaded that the ruling spirit is the first spirit to invade a certain area. That's why he's the spokesman. He's in there. He was the first one in there in that area. And when you start talking to the demon... He'll go, my, I, and then he, then next thing you know, you hear the third person, we. But then he's speaking on behalf of the, all the other demons inside. Because he is the first to gain interest, he can establish himself as the ruler. He then becomes the key to opening the way for other spirits to enter. When demons are being driven out, it is not uncommon to give a command to the ruling spirit. Come out and bring out all of your companies with you. And this is why I sometimes I cast them out by groups, not one by one. I say, come up with all your cronies. Come up out of your nest. Come out your hiding. And all the demons that are related to you got to come out right now in the name of Jesus. And you hear the person coughing and gagging. And some of you have a sinus drainage. The sinus is being drained. And they're just air. They come through the nose, out the nose, the mouth. So, I mean, some of them even uh, flatulence come out. By passing gas, whatever opening they can find, they'll come out. Some just leave the body through the skin, or however they can come out. Okay, because they're spirits. Spirits can go through walls and stuff. They didn't come through your skin. Okay, because he's the first one to gain interest. He can establish himself as the ruler. He did become the key to opening the way for other spirits to enter. When demons are being driven out, it is not uncommon to give a command to, to the ruling spirit. Come out 
and bring all of your companies with you. Or come out and bring all your roots. If any part of a group is not expelled, the way left for the group to be left back, let back in. For this reason, deliverance should be as thorough as possible. So you got to know what you're doing and what you're dealing with. For more than one spirit of a certain type may be found within a given group. For example, the bitterness colony may contain several demons of resentment. And I can go on without them reading it. Uh, resentment, bitterness, gr holding grudge, unforgiveness, right? Self-blame, self-pity, blaming, uh, falsely accusing others, uh, and, and so forth. Okay? So, that's a group in the demon right there. A certain type of demon may be present in more than one group. For example, a demon of anger may be found in the bitterness clan. True. And another anger demon in the perfection clan. And in one deliverance, several groups of spirit were cast out. In each group, there was a spirit of depression. It is only by the operation of the supernatural gift of discernment that one can know that all such combinations of spirit had been dealt with. And that's why I gave an example when the young lady asked me by way of phone how come she was the only one in her family out of all her sisters raped. The Holy Spirit gave me a, a revelation, a word of knowledge, that she had a demon in her called invitation to rape. And the demon bragged and boasts that, even though the young lady been to other deliverance workers in our church, that it was able to bypass them, or they, they probably was not under the direction of the Holy Spirit at the moment. And anyway, for whatever reason, the demon wasn't exposed. But at that time, the Lord exposed it, put it in my mind, and I spoke it, okay? Because I was... Under the direction of the Holy Spirit. And the demon acts very surprised that I knew it was there. Of course, the demon is not stupid and dumb in these situations. They know that I'm not a psychic. They know I'm not a mind reader and all of that. And they know I can't see inside the girl's body through the phone and see it, see it present. So the only person revealed it to me was the Holy Spirit. Okay. It is only by the operation of the supernatural gift of discernment that one can know that all such combinations of spirits have been dealt with. True. The following list of demon groups represents patterns experienced through actual deliverance service. Now I'm going to read this statement again. It is only by the operation of the supernatural gift, meaning of the Holy Spirit's discernment, that one can know that all such combinations of spirits had been expelled. Why? There were times I was calling a demon. And he was coming out. But not totally out. Maybe 80% or 40% of him came out. Sometimes they don't leave whole. They come out like like releasing air from a balloon. Diminishing in degrees. Because they're just air. And oh, he's weakening. So I'm calling him. Another demon came forward. To cover for him. And I'm calling him. He said, that punk is gone. I said, you call him a punk? He said, yeah, that, that, that coward is gone. Why are you calling him? I said, because I, I haven't finished casting him out yet. Now, the demon's lying to me. So he's covering for his friend inside that body. So I said, okay, I'll find out if he's still in there. And he said, what you going to do? I said, I'm going to ask the Lord to burn him if he's in there. So I said, Lord Jesus Christ. I said, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, if this demon is still inside of this body, Burn it in the name of Jesus. And I heard the demon cry out, ah, a very long wail. And I said, see, he's in there. I said, now you go back. I'm going to get you too, but you go back. So he tried to cover for his friends. It's not like the police come to your house looking for a criminal or someone that crim committed a crime in your family. And you lied and told, tell the police, he's not here. See, and the police said, well, open the door. I have a search warrant. Let me search every room, under the bed, wherever, the closet. And we'll see for ourselves whether he's there or not. And the same thing with exorcist. You don't have to believe the lying demon. He's lying to me, telling me his friend is gone. That punk is gone. That coward is gone. You didn't crash him out. No, he's not out yet. How do I know? The Holy Spirit is telling me he's not out. You can't rely on the demons all the time. But what the Lord had me to do is hold my head on the young lady's head and then I would pray and say if you're lying to me Jesus is going to burn you by the power of the Holy Spirit 
They told me the angels was piercing them. And I said, how did the angels pierce you? They said, with, with, with swords. And I said, how does it feel? They said, like hot lava. And they said, Jesus is burning us. And so they was lying to me so much. I was a novice. They was trying to confuse me. And I said, Lord Jesus Christ. I know the Holy Spirit is not a chatterbox. He's going to be telling me every second this, 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 and that, and that, and that. I said, Lord, I need a method to know whether these demons are lying. They're saying that I, this one is out, that one gone, and all that. I said, I don't know. So this is what the Lord had me to do. He said, you put your head on the girl's head. And you release the anointing. You say to the demon, if you are still in that body, the Holy Ghost is going to burn you. The power of God is going to burn you. And then now, demon talking to me after that, I said to the demon, I said, you know what the Lord Jesus is going to do if y'all lie, right? He said, yeah, burn, burn, burn. <laughs> it sounds funny. He said, yeah, burn, burn, burn. So that's a method I learned as an exorcist. The Lord knew I was a novice. Demons were trying to confuse me. They're lying. I have no other way of knowing it in there except the Holy Spirit revealed to me. Okay? And the Holy Spirit will tell me. He's still in there. But the Lord said, okay, pray. If they're in there, I'll burn them. And every time. So there was a time. There was a spirit called Hill Loss. He was, that spirit was very talkative. And it was telling me all kinds of things. And then I said, let me see you lying. The demon said, I am not lying. And I said, no, you're not lying. He's not burning you. I said, you know what happened? You lied to me, right? He said, yes. He said, Christ will burn me. See, that's a new thing I learned when dealing with demons and the Lord backed me up. Because I'm doing the work of Jesus Christ. I'm casting out demons in his name. I'm doing what the word told me to do. And I'm just being obedient to the word of God. So now we're going to name some groupings of demons. Okay, I'm just trying to give you all some experience that I've learned. And the Lord taught me. It was trained by Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, and doing deliverance. No man really trained me. Yes, I went to Bishop Roy Bryant class, and I learned all I can from him. But the Lord had me to learn many more things above and beyond, okay, for me to, uh, for him to use me in the way he want to use me. No two people are the same in Christ or in the body of Christ. Peter cannot be Paul. Paul cannot be Peter. Jude cannot be Matthew. Matthew cannot be Jude. John the Baptist cannot be Luke. Luke can't be John the Baptist. See, that's how it is in the body of Christ. When preachers try to pattern or imitate another preacher and don't go any farther than the preacher they imitate and pattern, they're just a carbon copy. But that's not all God can get out of you and work through you if you just be that, that total vessel that God wants you to be. Okay? Don't say such and such a one did it this way. This got to be the only and right way. No. God, there may be other things that the Lord want to teach you that he didn't teach the other person. Like when I started casting demons out of myself. I said, how come Bishop Bryant never told us he cast demons out of him? He went to Derek Prince to get the demon of pride cast out of him. They said, because he wasn't taught. They said, that man taught you, mean Jesus. So I can cast him out of myself night and day. And they'll come out screaming and gagging out of me. And I thank God. I don't have to go to no one to get deliverance. I just command them to come out of me in the name of Jesus. And they come. As the Holy Spirit revealed to me what to cast out. So I get my deliverance. Praise God. And I know demons are real. And I know I have the Holy Spirit. But the demons cannot go in the belly because the Holy Spirit is in the belly. And they say that to us. I don't care if you have the Holy Ghost. I say, why not? They say, we just don't. I said, there got to be a reason why y'all don't care. Well, what the reason why they don't care is this. They know that the Bible said, holiness without which no one should see the Lord. They know if they can stop you from living holy by working in your body, causing you to commit sins against God, then you stand before God. God said, depart from me, you work of iniquity. I never knew you. In other words, you didn't bear fruit. He said, I wish my father want you to bear much fruit. You don't bear fruit. Whatever, what's not bearing fruit will be cast into the fire, right? So the demons know if they can stop you from living holy, even while you have the Holy Ghost, they don't care. They want to stifle you. They want to hinder you. They want to stop you, stop your growth in Christ. While you're in the bed with Sally or Joe or Susan, you see, they, they want you to fornicate. They want you to commit adultery. They want you to hold grudges. They want you to be unloving. And guess what? They know what the Bible said. If you don't forgive others, 
The Lord said, neither will I forgive you. Now, if they got the spirit of unforgiveness in you, a holding grudges, a vindictive spirit, they know that if they work that in your heart and your mind, and you mad at Joe in the church, or you mad at the pastor, or you mad at somebody in the ministry, or somebody in your family, whatever, you holding grudges and being unforgiven, Satan said, you're going to hell. Why? How can God forgive you of your sins when you refuse to let go of what others have done to you? So demons work in all of that. That's why they don't care if you have the Holy Ghost. But one thing they do care, if you obey the Holy Ghost. That's why Bishop Bryant like to say, okay, you got the Holy Ghost, but does the Holy Ghost have you? That's the difference. You may have the Holy Spirit, but does he have you? That's the question. You understand? You can have the Holy Spirit and yet be disobedient to the Word and the Spirit. So who are you fooling? James said in James 1.22, Be ye doers of the word of God, and not hearers. If any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, you just deceive yourself. You deceive yourself by knowing the word, hearing the word, and then being disobedient to the word. How can we please God being disobedient to his holy word? You can't. See? You can't. Please God. That's why I tell people, how you pleasing God, you're not pleasing the devil. If you're pleasing the devil, you're not pleasing God. You can't please both at the same time. See? You can't. You can't serve two masters. Anyway, I'm getting back to the groupings of demons. Lord, I feel like preaching. Praise God. All right? It is only the operation of the supernatural gift of discernment that one can know that all such combinations of spirit had been dealt with. I remember in 2008, I was taking a young lady through deliverance at my home. Hundreds of demons coming out of her, the anointing high, felt like we was in heaven on earth, presence of God in the room. She looked like she's going to sleep. So the Lord remind me what, reminded me of what Bishop Bryant said in Demonology Claire. He said, you got to be observant. Watch, watch as well as pray. Watch the person you take through deliverance. So I'm, I'm observing and I'm saying, Lord, she like she's passing out. So the Lord. He said, "You." I said, you spirit in the name of Jesus. Who's putting her, who, who's doing this? Who's making her look like she's passing out? He said, I am. I said, what's your name? He said, I'm, 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 I'm the demon that's cutting off her blood circulation. So there's cutting off her blood circulation in the midst of a deliverance. And I had to rebuke this demon, cast it out, and I warn every demon inside of her not to interfere with the deliverance. Okay. Or I'm going to ask the Lord to burn you in the name of Jesus. And when I say I'm going to ask the Lord to burn you, that, that frightens them. They told me that Jesus told them that if they didn't obey me, and I said that thing about burning them, he was going to burn them. And I said, you know what the Lord Jesus is going to do to you if you don't obey me, right? They said, yeah, burn, burn, burn. Well, what I, where, where did I learn burn, the burning of demons from? Bishop Bryant, because I remember I had a conversation with Bishop privately one time. Right before I was studying his demonology class, I was on the balcony, and me and him was talking about casting out demons, and I told Bishop I cast out 42 demons, and Bishop said, oh, you got those out. They came out. And I said, Bishop, one demon told me he wasn't going to come out. Bishop said, oh, you can make them come out. I said, how? He said, I burned them. See? With the spirit of burning. So I learned that from Bishop Ryan also. So I was telling you, if you sit under the proper exorcist, the proper demonology teacher, and God have you there to learn from them. Don't go against the grain. Don't let the devil deceive you. Learn all that you can from them. Because they're speaking from experience. They're testifying that which they do know. They're testifying that which they have seen and heard. And, and they're not in error because they, they, God is using them. You, you want to fight the man of God whom God called to teach you the word, teach you demonology, okay? teach you deliverance. Don't fight. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge and for rejecting knowledge. Right now, this knowledge is not lacking. Look how God got me right here live on Facebook teaching demonology every day. Hmm? And then, who's going to reject this? Who's going to hear this and then allow the devil to steal it from them while God is trying to bless you to learn demonology living that Christian can have not a demon? Demons, plural. I don't believe there's one Christian with one demon. I always said, say, and this may sound humorous, but I'm not trying to be facetious. If you have one demon, you are highly 
bless the past, the mercy of God and grace all on you. Because nobody that I know, or I believe, had one demon. Even Mary Lack Magdalene had seven. Okay? And I even asked the demon, how many of y'all were in Mary Magdalene? They say we had lust in her, lust for men, fornication, adultery, and he went right on naming all seven demons. How much I learned by the grace of God from these demons and casting them out. I praise God. Amen. So now they got this loud noise behind me, so I'm gonna try to lift my voice real high. Uh, these groupings are only suggestive of what may be encountered. The listing is by no means intended to be exhausted. In other words, we don't have the full list. Okay? Nor the groupings to be invariable. As explanation is given of some of the groupings listed, this is to offer some insight into the problems caused by particular groups of spirits. Most of the groups are rather self-explanatory. Your author believes that the information given in this chapter will prove to be of great practical value to those who are moving into deliverance ministry. It will help anyone to better understand how demons set themselves up in groups. Years of study and experience are condensed into a few pages. Okay, I'm going to start calling out some groups of demons that they listen this book. This is Pigs in the Parlor, page 128, Frank and Ida Mae Hammond. And I'm going to kind of conclude because there's some loud music being played behind me and I'll do a part two later on tonight when it's more quiet. Common demons. Number one, groupings of demons. Bitterness, resentment, hatred, unforgiveness, balance, temper, bad temper, temper tantrum, anger, retaliation, murder, okay? Number two, rebellion, self-will, stubbornness, disobedience, anti-submissiveness, unteachable spirit. Number three grouping, strife, contention, bickering, argument, quarreling, fighting. Number four, control, possessiveness, dominance, witchcraft. Yes, witchcraft work with control. He's, that's, that's his job. Number five, retaliation, destruction, spite, hatred, sadism, hurt, cruelty. Number six, accusation, judging, criticism, fault finding. Number seven, rejection, fear rejection, self rejection, blame, guilt. Number eight, insecurity, inferiority, self pity, loneliness. Timidity, shyness, inadequacy, ineptness. Number nine, jealousy, envy, suspicion, distrust, selfishness. Number ten, withdrawal, pouting, daydreaming, fantasy, pretension, unreality. And it goes on and on. Um, I'm going to conclude and then I will do a part two on the groupings of demons. Uh, and I will pull out other demonology books as Bishop Bryant's Manual of Demonology to show what he says about the group as a demon. Uh, pull out Pigs in the Parlor and con conclude with that. And Doris Wagner. I, will, I also will teach on the rejection tree. She has a tree in her book called the rejection tree. And also demons work in that group. This is the tree right here. As you can see, the tree. And she lists demons that come in by way of rejection. And babies may have been rejected by their parents. That's why they put them up for adop adoption. Any child that has been adopted, they experience rejection. And they might grow up saying, why my parents didn't want me? And that's a whole lot of trouble right there. Doors wide open for demons to come in. So we'll talk about the rejection. Okay? I'm going to talk about the breaking of curses. Someone put on my page, how do you break the inheritance cycle? Okay, the, 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 the renouncing of curses over your family line, the generational curse, the curse inheritance demon. And we'll be, as the Lord lead me, is we're going to really learn demonology here. As much as I know, I'm going to share with you that, like I said on my other previous tape, 
when you get in demonology deliverance, there's a whole lot you're going to learn. Uh, there's a lot you may see in here that's going to confirm what I was saying on these videotapes. God bless all of y'all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Remember, I don't want no one glorifying me. I don't want no one uh, trying to pump me up. That's demonic. I don't want no one to take their eyes off of Jesus and put their eyes on me. I'm just a vessel used by the Lord Jesus Christ for his glory. Let's focus on whose work this is. It's the work of Jesus Christ, okay? And he called us to do this. May God bless all of you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.